Flip Rip students, Mr. Lawrence here with your next flip lesson, and uh, we were learning how to graph exponential functions, right? Um, and then we learned a little bit about carbon dating, which is an application of exponential functions, and we're going to continue with applications. These things are very handy and come into the real world quite often. For um, We're going to be able to write and solve exponential functions for real-world situations. That will be the I can statement. And um, uh, we're going to start with one that, you know, probably could happen to you right here at Edwards Middle School. And then we're going to talk about one that could happen to you uh, uh, pretty much at any time in your life. And then one that uh, is kind of a curious situation. Um, you may not need to figure it out in your life, but then again, you may if you end up working as a city planner or something like that. Okay, so here's the first question. Mr. Bilkoffer is going to give you a multiple choice test with five questions. Each question will have four possible answers, A, B, C, or D. He tells the class anyone that can get all four questions correct will get a free candy bar from the cafeteria at lunch. You, being a typical teenager that loves to avoid studying, think to yourself, how hard can it be? You decide not to study. Now remember, you have to get a perfect score to get this. And if uh, Corvus is paying attention, he'll think back to a little probability lesson that we had uh, in uh, Academic Assist, I don't know, maybe a week ago. And uh, Corvus actually figured out a way to do this problem. But if you're not Corvus, then you probably want to do a little thinking here now. Uh, first of all, I want to ask, do you know what the fundamental counting principle is? You should. Uh, let me go to another page here. The fundamental counting principle, it says, let me write it down, fundamental counting principle. And that's a principal, not a principal, not like Mrs. Armantrout or Mr. Morgan or Mr. Wagner. Remember, they're your pal, so it's P-A-L. This is P-L-E. All right, the fundamental counting principle says that if one event happens M ways and a second event happens N ways, or M and N are just unknown numbers, then together they happen M times N ways, or better yet, M N. So, for example, if one thing happens five ways, like maybe I have five shirts to wear, and one thing happens n ways, like maybe I have seven different pairs of pants I can choose from. Okay, five shirts, seven pants. How many different outfits can I make? Well, I can make 35 outfits. That's the fundamental counting principle. I know some of you wanted to, like, start to make a tree, but the tree would become quite large, especially if I say five shirts, seven pants, uh, 10 hats and three pairs of shoes. So if I had five shirts, seven pants, 10 hats, three pairs of shoes, it wouldn't be a real simple tree. This tree would be quite large. In fact, um, if I multiply it all together, five times seven, and I'm gonna do five times seven is 35, and then I'm gonna multiply by three. Okay, and I'm gonna get five, 105, and then I've got to multiply by 10, which is going to end up being 1,050 different outfits that I have to choose from. So I don't know about you, but I really don't want to do it the way you did it in fifth or sixth grade where you made a little tree to figure out the answer. I mean, that tree method is great when the numbers are small, and it's a great visual way to understand what's going on. But now that we're getting into high school math, I definitely don't want to do it that way. I want to do it using math, the fundamental counting principle, because uh, a tree with 1,050 branches, it's going to take a really long time to draw. All right, so let's get back to the problem. And so there are, uh, how many questions are there? Hold on, I can't find it. Five questions. There we go. Five questions. So one, two, three, four and five. Now, how many different ways do you have to answer each question? Well, there's four possible answers, right? A, B, C, or D. Okay, now only one of those is going to be right. 
if you just randomly guess, what's the probability you're going to get it right? Well, you should all know that it's one out of four. Okay, and the probability of getting the second one right is one out of four, and the third one is one out of four, and the fourth one is one out of four, and the fifth one is one out of four. Okay, now the probability, um, oh, this, I'm sorry, this here should be a five. I'm so sorry about that. That should be a five because you have to get all five questions correct. Uh, so you have all these one fourths. According to the fundamental counting principle, you can multiply them all together. One fourth times one fourth times one fourth times one fourth times one fourth. This is where Corvus figured out that instead of doing that, I could just do one fourth to the fifth power. Now let me tell you, this is a monstrously large number. Okay, it means you're going to do one times one times one times one times one, which is really hard. Oops, I forgot the one. Okay, but in your denominator, you have four times four times four times four times four going on. And I'll see if I can do this in my head. I know four times four is 16 times four is 64. And instead of multiplying by four, I'm going to double. So to do this four, I'm going to double this twice. So if I double it once, I get 128, and then I'm at 256. <coughs> All right, so then I got to do this one. So I'm going to double 256 and get 512, and then 1024. So that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was tempted to go get a calculator, but I was able to figure it out. So what does this mean? It means there are 1024 different ways to answer this test. One way would be, you know, A, 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 A. Another way would be A, 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 B. And then, of course, A, 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 C, and so on. If I were to list all the possible ways, there would be 1,024 of them. And only one of them would get me a perfect score and earn me the candy bar. So it would be quite foolish to not study for this test, to just go in blindly and try to guess. So think about that next time you've got a true, false, or a multiple choice test coming up, that it's really foolish to not study and think, oh, well, I'll just, I'll just guess because I've got a good chance. And actually, you don't. You have a terrible chance. All right. Let's look at another situation. For completing middle school, hold on one second here. Um, I need to move this problem down. There we go. Oh, no, it doesn't want to move. Okay, for completing middle school, many of your family members gave you money. They advised you to save it until it was time to go to college. You go to your local bank and decide to invest in a certificate of deposit, a CD. If you don't know what that is, what it means is instead of just a normal savings account, you put some money at the bank and you're not allowed to touch it for a certain period of time. The bank then gives you a better interest rate. Like right now, if you go open a savings account, I think the interest rates are probably like 0.25%. They're not even 1%. But a bank, if you're willing to let them have your money without you touching it for, say, you know, two years or five years or something like that, they'll give you more interest. The longer that you give it to them, the better interest that you'll, you'll receive. So let's just suppose you had $600 invest and the bank was going to offer you 3% interest rate annually for four years. How much money will you have at the end of the four years? Well, to solve this one, we're going to use a formula. And the formula looks like this. It's A equals P times the quantity of 1 plus or minus R, and we're going to raise that to the power of T. Okay, and there, that exponent makes it an exponential function. Now, what is all this? Well, A is the amount that you have after T years. Okay. The T is the time in years, the time in years, okay? The R is the interest rate. Sorry about that, running two words together. 
interest rate, and that has to be as a decimal. Okay, and then P is called the principal. In other words, it's the amount being invested or the starting amount. The principal is the starting amount, okay? Now, um, why is there a plus or minus? That's going to bother you, some of you. Well, do you have to make money on a certificate of deposit? You do. The interest rate is always positive. And so in that case, we'll use the plus. But if you're losing, like, for example, if you invest in the stock market where it's always a gamble and you've been losing at a certain percentage rate, well, then it would be a negative. Okay, and we'll do an example of a negative situation here in a minute. So to figure this out, all I do is I plug in my numbers, okay? $600 is my starting amount. That's P, okay? There's my rate. My time is four years. All I have to do is plug them into this formula, and then I will know the correct answer. So to set this up, what I do is I take, uh, I'm looking for A, that's my variable. My principal was 600, okay? The one is always in there. I'm gaining money, so I have a plus 0.03, and then my time is four years, okay? And if I want to simplify that a little bit, 600 times the quantity of 1.03, to the fourth power. And you can type that in on your calculator as is, and we will get the answer. Hold on one second. My daughter's retrieving my graphing calculator for me. I'll be there in one second. And when I crunch that in my calculator, I get this number, 675.305286. Now remember, we're talking about money. So this doesn't make sense, this long decimal. So I'm going to round it. I'm not going to go to the nearest dollar because I understand rounding. Now, if you don't understand rounding, then you need to come see me. And I really shouldn't have to be explaining this to honors algebra students. But there are many of you that have holes in your learning. I don't know, maybe you just didn't care. Maybe you just didn't do your best. Maybe you only learned it for the test. I'm not sure. Okay, but you need to understand rounding. And since we're going money, I'm going to round to the hundredths place, I look behind the hundredths number to the thousandths place, five or more, I raise the score, so it becomes 31. See the 30, it became 31. Four or less, I would have given it a rest and I would have just said 30 cents. All right, so at the end of the four years, you'll have an extra $75.31. Okay, let's take a look at another situation. I won't take quite as long to do it because it's gonna use the same formula. And I'll write the formula down again. A equals P times quantity of 1 plus or minus R to the power T. All right. A town currently has a population of 10,000 people. That's my starting point. That's my P. Due to a bad economy, people have been moving out an interest rate. And they're moving out. So the town is losing people 2% per year. So that'll be a, that's my R. And remember, it's a negative R because I'm losing if this trend continues, what will be the town's population five years from now? There's my T. All I do is plug it in. A is going to equal the population uh, 1 minus 0.02 to the power of 5. Because 2% is not 0.2, right? You should know how to do that. All right. So I'm going to get 10,000. Uh, what is that going to be? 0.98, 98 hundredths to the fifth power. And at this point, I can go to my calculator and I'm going to type in 10,000 times 0.98 to the power of 5. And I'm going to end up 9,039. Now, in this case, I got a big long decimal. The decimal is 0 0.207968, right? Um, in, when I'm talking about people, this doesn't make sense. I'm going to round to the whole person, but when I get my answer, I'm going to get this wavy equal sign. 
and it means approximately or about 9,039. Okay? Now, let's look at the situation in A. Same problem, except what will be the population seven years and three months from today? Well, the problem is going to look almost the same. Right? Now, 0.98. Now, the seven years, it's not 7.3. Remember, in three months, months are, years are based on 12, so three twelves are the same as one fourth. And the decimal, that's 0.25, right? So for T, I'm going to do 7 and 25 hundredths. So again, at this point, I just go to my calculator. And I'm going to put in 7 and a quarter for the T. And in this case, I'm going to get 8,638, and it was 0.519, so I went ahead and said I rounded up. Okay, that will be the population. Now, one more that I think is really cool, and I used to do this a harder way until my students uh, several years ago thought of an easier way to do it. Okay, same problem, but this time the population was eight years ago. 8 equals 10,000 times 0.98. Remember, that's 1 minus 0.02. But 8 years ago, my time is going to be negative because I'm looking into the past. I think that's really cool that it works out so simple like that. All right. Um, so let me put a negative 8 in there. And when I do that, I get... 11,754 people. And again, that's a rounded answer because the decimal doesn't make any sense when we're talking about people. All right, a little bit of a longer lesson, but you saw a lot of applications. And we're going to get some practice with this uh, in class tomorrow. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.